Hey all, and this is the special Year of the Tiger event. This is a Dark Slayer event and Immortal Killer. So I've only got a couple of teams this time around, both single affinity. This team here is for the solo bosses. It hits pretty hard. And then an alternative team. This is mainly for guild bosses and it was useful when levelling up the solo bosses as well. So let's talk through the first team. Pretty straightforward team. Three turn team though. High performance unit area. This is used on turn two. When the enemy hits to get that supercharged buff. Metaverse Masters. This is used on either turn one or turn one and turn two depending on the board. You use this card to give a 150% damage buff to the next card which is the Freedom Fighters. This is the main hitting card mainly because of that bonus attack that it does afterwards. It says 100% of the damage, but it's actually far more than that. I think it's 500% with the 5 times battle boost. It's very effective and hopefully you still have this card. It's one of the best Dark Slayer cards in the game. So Lost Covenant. This is a good card. It's also a commander card. The main reason this is on the team is because it creates all these dark power gems. It creates rather a lot of them, as you can see. But that's the only reason it's on the team. Since it's a commander card, it can't hit. And then finally, Regal Revolutionaries. This one increases Immortal Killer Attack, which is why it's on the team. Other than that, though, it's not especially interesting. It's okay, a bit outdated, but yeah, it has an attack bonus. And that helps a bit with the damage. I would prefer a damage bonus card, but I don't have any of those, so I have to make do with what I've got. The event ultimate form and ultra rare both have damage bonuses though, so you could swap out the last two cards and put both of those on the team if you have the event deck. It's an idea to try anyway. So moving on to the relics, it's basically my best immortal killer or dark Slayer, or even in one instance, a Commander Relic. The first two are just to break the shields. There we go, three and three plus one per Dark Commander Ultimate Hero. So those two relics are enough to break all the shields. Then it's just my best Dark Slayer Relics, basically, to fill up the team. Yeah, I don't have that many Dark Slayer Relics, but... I don't really focus too much on Slayer. I don't really enjoy it. But anyway, this team is reasonably effective. Sometimes the bonus attack hits for around 15Q, sometimes a bit higher even. So it's not a bad team at all. Now onto the alternative team. I wanted to use Almar as he's five pink stars. I'm trying to get him up to six, but... We have some really difficult to obtain items to take Alma up to six pink stars. So I can't really do that. But this is an interesting option. 400% damage and HP for all dark heroes. It's technically a better leader skill than, say, the ultimate form from this current event. And then with this team, pretty much the same as the previous team, except without the massive boost to damage. It's basically just my best ultimate heroes, or ultimate Dark Slayer heroes, should I say. Paranormal Ancients is the only different card. Again, it's not really that effective. It just creates power gems. It has this pristine and investigate buff as well. Nothing too special about that, though. It's basically just my best cards on the team to try and kill bosses as quickly as possible. As I've already mentioned though, it's not really that effective on anything other than guild bosses or bosses up to around diamond level. But anyway, that's the teams I'm using. Unfortunately, I've not really seen too many other options. It's kind of difficult to give other ideas or suggestions, but one card that could be quite useful is Seaborn Scallywags as it has that upgrade skill and creates quite a few power gems. There's not many 
other options though it's kind of difficult it all seems to be based around the freedom fighters with dark slayer so yeah that's kind of what you need to do otherwise you're going to have problems basically you could try a commander team i guess you might hit a few q with that anyway that's the teams i'm using i only did two tiers of the vault didn't get anything interesting from that let's get on with the actual event here we go all right, so here's the actual event. I'm going to take it to the highest prestige. I'm going to aim to hit bosses that don't have many players in them, or my own bosses for this event. So let's see if any bosses like that can spawn. Oh, here's a good one. This is a perfect one to test out my team on. I'll go ahead and lock this. The hardest bosses I have found so far have armor on them, so bear that in mind. As you play the event, I find armor quite difficult to deal with. Right, so here we go. This boss has pierce. That can be removed by Eria, so it's not really a problem. Let's see how much damage I can do to this boss. This should be fun. So yeah, on unlocked bosses or other people's bosses... Since this is a three turn team, I need to hit bosses that don't have many players in them. That will be the general strategy for this event. Also bear in mind, I could swap the lead card as well. Since this is only, just click on that, 300% HP and damage, rather than the 300, 600%. It's just there to make it a little bit easier to show the team basically. There you go, that's quite a good match actually. Let's see how much damage that does. Then it's all in the Freedom Fighters nuke. There we go. Then just repeat the process. So Pierce is a nice easy skill to deal with. Also, the HP doesn't really matter too much with this team as it heals really fast as you just saw. Here we go. Oh, grid has turned to a rainbow, then just repeat the process. So yeah, a pretty effective team, actually. I have half of the event deck, though, so I may try and get the other half if I can. Would be nice anyway. Right. That's not bad as well. Quite a few loose power gems. That's what I'm aiming to do. Match one, then match again, then see how many loose power gems I have. If that makes sense. But yeah. This is a pretty effective team. I've always liked Dark Slayer events. It's my best kind of Slayer event. Oh, Pierce blocks high performance units area. That's actually a major problem, so... Yeah, I didn't actually know that, until now anyway. Right. So I've got to use Eria next turn then. Yeah, I didn't know that, that was quite weird. Pierce is actually quite a difficult skill then if it hits Eria. But yeah, this time it's been removed, so no problem. Just have to be a bit careful. If it hits area, just wait it out, basically. I think they changed Toxin as well to balance this. You can use area even if Toxin is active. That's something to bear in mind. They're always making slight changes to the game. That's one change I have noticed. Right, so get one more hit out, then I probably need to do one more attack to finish off the boss. But I'm going to hit someone else's solo as well before I finish this one off, just to show you what the team can do and what I will be doing for most of the event, basically. Oh, I have an ultimate gem up. Oh, I've activated in the wrong order. So this is probably not going to be that effective, but yeah. 
Don't forget about the ultimate gems if you're using older cards. Oh, no, that's still a decent hit. There we go. Let's quit out of this. Right, so let's try and find someone else's solo to hit as well. Most of the solos are dying quite quickly. Now, let's see what pops up. Might take a bit of time. Nothing good at all. Look at this trash. Yeah, okay, I'm going to wait a bit and hopefully something else will pop up. All right, that one looks okay. Even though it's been found by Shadow Phoenix, so it's probably going to die instantly. I have another of my own solo bosses as well, as you probably saw, but I want to see if I can get anything on this one. I think it's going to die instantly, though, so... I know Shadow Phoenix is a really good player, so when I saw Found by Shadow Phoenix on the boss, I'm like, this ain't going to be up for long. But we will see. I might get something on it. The problem is you need to get the Freedom Fighters nuke out in time, so yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Right, so that was a waste of time. I have my own one again. The other one has been killed as well. This one might stay up. You never know. But yeah, the bosses are dying really quickly. So this is maybe not the most effective team. I don't know. It's only really good on locked solos. We will see anyway if I can get anything on this one or not. It might be better to try and make a turn zero team, but I don't think it's going to get 5%. This one might, though. Ah, oh, armor. Armor's going to mess it up. Yeah. So what I need to do with this team is really get an armor counter, I think. Or maybe just try and get the ultimate form. I mean, I have half of the deck. It's very difficult, though. Yeah, it's going to die before I can get anything. So, yeah, it gives an idea, anyway, of what I could do with this team. It's not that effective on anything apart from locked bosses or bosses that have probably been rallied as well. But it's the best I can make up. And it does hit pretty hard when it does hit. You never know. I might be able to scrape something on the boss now. There's no armour up. And it's got a little bit of health. But I think it's going to die now. So the Freedom Fighters nuke is not going to hit, unfortunately. No. Oh, well. Yeah. That's a general strategy anyway. Even just tagging these bosses gets you the Zodiac Shards. I'll talk a bit more about those later on in the video. All right, so let's have a look at the event rewards. I have already claimed all of these. I killed one solo boss and that was enough to claim the entire collection. Or should I say I got MVP on it? It's actually for upgrading Almar. Which is pretty useful, actually. The Bentaric Shards, for example, they're quite difficult to get elsewhere. So a few decent items there. I've already claimed all of those, though, so I can't really talk too much about them. I'll go ahead and claim my six-star hero from here. I haven't done that yet. Let's see what I get. The main hero could be useful, but... Oh, I think that is the main hero. The reason I say that is because I can actually get this deck with coins later on in the event. Not sure if I will yet or not. You can see here, 36 out of 42 plus I already have one of the cards. So I'll decide that later on. It all depends on how competitive this event is. I'm in a rather large Legends League as you can see here. And to be honest... I don't really want to compete that hard. I'm okay just staying in Legends. But anyway, I'm going to have a quick look at what it is this time around. I think it might be a Warden. I think it's a Light Warden. 
Let's have a quick look anyway. Right. What have we got? A Light Warden. Yeah, that was what I thought it was. Defender skill, flatline, yeah. Basically useless nowadays. No one really uses revives, plus it's light. So my initial thought is this is a warden to avoid. So yeah, I'm not going to be competing too hard for this. Light and flatline is not used anymore. Bit of a disappointing warden, but wardens sometimes have bad defender skills. They have to give them all the defender skills. Right, so let's have a look at the Zodiac feature of the event. I can summon a boss. You can also summon the bosses with gems. So I might as well go ahead and summon a Zodiac boss. This could be quite interesting. I think you just have to kill 20 solo bosses in order to summon a Zodiac boss. That's what they look like anyway. Not sure what to do. Oh, is that stamina? Birthright armor. Interesting. I'm just going to try something. I'm going to see if you can lock the boss before attacking it. Well, that was good. It crashed. That definitely locked the boss. Right, I'll try that again. I'd normally edit something like that out, but the game crashes so often. I'm just leaving that in the video. Right, we're going to try again. We're going to try again and, well, I'm going to guess it's locked now. Just make sure you don't use up all your stamina. This should die relatively easy, but birthright armour. I don't think birthright armour is going to be that much of a problem. I'm going to see if I can hit through the armour. Or I could take half the health off them, rally allies as well, but I think it's going to die. Oh, the armor's disappeared. That was really weird. Why has the armor disappeared? I think it's only got one QHP as well, so this should die really easily. I might even be able to kill these with my other team. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice and easy to kill. You should be able to defeat these with any deck. Just have to be a bit careful if you're rallying as they may steal the MVP, even though it's only one token MVP. Not overly exciting, if I'm being honest. Anyway, let's go back to the Zodiac store. What can I... Oh, craft chromatic Zodiac coins and... I'm going to guess I could buy some stuff from the store now. Yeah. You may have noticed there's only one of each item, so I wouldn't get too excited about that, apart from the Arisen Warden Stone Shards at the bottom, probably the best item available there. I guess I'll look at this more as the event progresses, but I may end up cleaning out the store, depending on how many Zodiac bosses I summon and how hard I play this event. Alright, so now to look at the news feed. There's some interesting changes, to say the least. How to play Year of the Tiger. You've already seen me playing this, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. The Zodiac coins as well. Event defender skill updates. Only two enemy defender skills. So getting the ultimate form can counter both. That's pretty useful, actually. More solo keys. I like that. Leaderboard rewards adjustments. Now this is where things have gone a bit wrong. So basically what that means there. They've taken out all the gem rewards out of the lower leagues. Giftable guild rewards do not include the crate gifts. So it's a bit strange why they've done this. Originally I thought it was to try and tackle... Alt abuse, so to speak, or alt accounts, but they've left the crates in. And if you're going to tackle alts, you need to take the crates out, as the whole point of having an alt is for the crates. So I have no idea what they're doing here. I think the best thing to do is to go across to the event and show you all for yourselves what 
they've actually done here. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Just wait till it goes onto the guild thingy. On so I can wait a bit longer, otherwise sometimes it goes onto solar anyway, even if you press it now. There we go, press it now. It should go onto the guild leaderboards. There we go. So press the information is the best thing to do here. You can see overlords, all the gems are still there, and the crate gifts. Archmages, same. Warlocks, same. Wizards, yep, yeah, that's okay. Sorcerers, yeah, it's still okay there, but if you go into Enchanters, you can see the gems are gone, and so are the gifts, but the crates are still there. So this is really weird. No idea why they've done this, because the whole point of having an alt is for those crate gifts, and they're still there in the lower leagues. So all this is doing is punishing new players, basically, making it very hard for them to play the game. So yeah, goodness knows why they've done this. I hope they revert this change because, in my opinion, this is unbelievably stupid and totally pointless. So finally, let's have a look at the actual event deck. It does look like a pretty good deck. Maybe not the most powerful deck I've ever seen. Most important part of this deck is that it increases Dark Slayer damage by 150%. That's a rather big boost, and that probably sells the deck in itself. The rest of the skills are nothing to write home about, not very exciting. Has an ambush on it. The other thing is it is a two-turn cooldown card, so... Yeah, not bad at all. You see it counters both armour and pierce, so yeah. It's a decent deck for the damage bonus. So what you could do is try the ultimate form, then the ultra rare Tiger Queen, as that has the damage bonus as well. Both of those on the team, then a big power gem spawner, and you might be hitting for really good damage doing that. Maybe getting even 10 to 12 Q on Freedom Fighters, then bonus attack like 60 Q or something like that. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope that was helpful. As always, if you do have any questions or suggestions regarding this video, Please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you did enjoy this video, leaving a like and subscribing is always appreciated. Thank you to those that have already subscribed. There are a few other videos on the screen you may enjoy as well. Feel free to check those out if you want to do so. And thanks for watching.